Well, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, best, best regards from Brussels. My name is Andrus Kubilus. Uh, I am a member for Open Parliament from, from Lithuania. And I am also leading uh, this informal EU Neighborhood East Forum. But today is really a, a celebration day since uh, we invited uh, you know, all, all, all colleagues from Poland, from the Democratic Belarus, from Ukraine, from Lithuania to celebrate a very important day. A uh, day of uh, 20, 230 anniversary of the set of May uh, Constitution. And uh, well, Zoom is quite a, a challenge, you know, uh, <laughs> to have good celebrations, you know, on Zoom. But nevertheless, so we shall try really to make a nice event, uh, both looking to the past, our common past, glorious past, but also using this opportunity to look into the future. But, uh, well, I am not the best, maybe, you know, uh, uh, manager of celebrations, uh, but in any case, I know that celebrations should start from something very special. So it's my big privilege and honor uh, to, uh, to invite, you know, uh, for a very special performance, uh, uh, Margarita Levchuk, whom we know as really brilliant uh, 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 soloist uh, of Bolshoi Opera Theatre in Minsk. And uh, she performs in different uh, theaters all over Europe. But in addition to opera, she also sings jazz repertoire and has as a cross genre collaborations. And in August 2020, Margarita performed in, in Svetlana Tsikhanovska tour. Uh, she was always in the protest uh, in Minsk after August uh, elections. As many of uh, Belarusian real leaders of democratic uh, Belarus, she was forced to leave Belarus because of safety matters. She is currently in Vilnius. And uh, well, Without any longer introduction, you will, uh, yeah, we are happy to see Margarita and Margarita, you know, so stages for you. And I invite everybody really to enjoy what Margarita really will now will do. So Margarita, thanks a lot that you are with us. Hello. Здравствуйте всем. Мы бы хотели с Андреем Пауком исполнить для вас песню на белорусском языке. Песня Гим. Погоня. А в начале 90-х годов этот вариант песни рассматривался в качестве возможного гимна Республики Беларусь, но эта песня так и не стала официальным гимном. И в 2020 году э, песня «Гимн Погоня» получила э, широкую известность в качестве одного из символов протеста против режима Лукашенко наряду с бело-красно-белым флагом. Стихи Максима Богдановича, музыка Николая Щеглова Куликовича. Песня Гим Погоня. Только в сердце тревожным почую за краину родимую жак. Струю браму святую и воняка у на грозных конях в белой пене проносятся кони, рвутся, мкнутся и тяжко хребять стародавней литовской погони не разбить. Продвами ады в 
Thanks a lot, Margarita. Thanks a lot, really. It's it's so nice. It's so it's so touchy and, and so symbolic, really. Yeah, and it's thank you it much. and and really it, it shows how much we are united. You know, you are singing the song which which was supposed to become uh, Belarusian, you know, national anthem. And we Lithuanians, we hear, you know, about uh, Ostra Brahma, about Lithuanian uh, Beatles, Lithuanian Pagonia. So which means uh, we are so interconnected that to separate, you know, both our history and culture is impossible. Dear, dear friends, dear colleagues, uh, uh, I will try to continue with uh, some opening, opening uh, words. First of all, on, on technologies, you know, if somebody needs translation into Russian language or, or English, when somebody speaks Russian, there is also translation. We shall go uh, as as you have seen in in uh, in uh, in our program in our agenda with uh, series of statements from different different you know um, different countries different representatives, and really it's it's my pleasure and and uh, and honor really again to to congratulate all of all of you all of us with this very nice nice day nice day which. Uh, I was thinking about, you know, before we, 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 we started this meeting and at least in Lithuania, I don't know any other day if, except of set of May, uh, where all of us, Poles, Lithuanians, uh, Belarusians and Ukrainians can, uh, you know, celebrate, you know, once a year, what I call, you know, the glory past of our union. Despite you know maybe sometimes different views to to some episodes of that history, nevertheless, we 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 really uh, can celebrate, and and that is what we can be proud of, and we can celebrate it. You know, being really different uh, in our today's you know political views, uh, being different you know being being representative of different nations, uh, because. This history unites us, and uh, and uh, unites us, you know, not only for celebration of the past, of the glorious past, but also for the fight, you know, for for the future. If to look, uh, maybe I'm not, uh, you know, the best historian in this, you know, <laughs> what I can call community of set of me, you know, but if to look really into into the history, into the basis of uh, set of May Constitution, we can say very clearly, Constitution, you know, was written by 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 the best, uh, you know, uh, minds of that time. Uh, in order, really, first of all, you know, to uh, fight for independence of the Union, to fight for constitutional democracy in the Union, and to fight for, in some way, for European future of the Union. That was the major goal. Unfortunately, you know, uh, history plays some uh, 
how to say, some tricks, uh, likes to repeat itself. We know how you know, this attempt to uh, modernize the country, at least you know, to abandon you know, liberum that uh, what, you know, was, was a problem. Uh, how it ended? It ended with geopolitical you know, defeat which you know, unfortunately was led again by, by Tsarist Russia. And as we know from the history of Russia, which was, it looked like that it can be a friend of you know, Union at the time, also decided to join Russia there. So that's, that's what we know from the history. You know. And the same, the same unfortunately was, was happening not only at that moment, but even later. But, uh, when we are looking into into you know this you know constitution, which really was so crucial for modernization of the country, uh, so to bring in you know uh, totally new human rights values, democracy values into 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 the union, we can see uh, we can be each each of us we can be very proud to you know what. Uh, our uh, our leaders, our our representatives at that time, you know, what they did in order to have this constitution. We know from the history that uh, you know one of the of those who was most proactive, you know, in writing uh, the constitution was Ignaz Pototsky. I don't know, you know, well, he was, as I know from the history, he was Grand Marsh Marshal of Lithuania. But as I understand, he was of Polish origin. And when I was traveling through Western part of Ukraine, I saw so many, you know, uh, uh, monuments or, 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 or palaces, you know, of Potosky family that I still do not know. So was he Ukrainian more or less, or was he, you know, or was he, <laughs> or was he, you know, uh, uh, Polish, or was he, you know, uh, how to say, representatives of Grand Duchy of Lithuania, which we can be proud of. You know, uh, then we know that uh, the first uh, the first reading, uh, secret reading of of the trust uh, of the draft was done in the palace of Radzivilo family in Warsaw. Again, we can perhaps discuss you know with our Belarusian friends and Polish friends. Radzivilo is Lithuanian, Belarusian, or Polish. You know, <laughs> so that's that's again you know how history is is, is making us really very much united, but. I will not try to speak uh, too much about history. Really, again, I, I would like to congratulate all, all of you, you know, with that, what a nice day, uh, with, with, uh, with, with a day when we can remember how we were, all of us we were fighting for, for independence, for constitutional democracy, for European future. But uh, all that fight is still not, not finished. And, uh, and this, you know, community, what I can call community of set of May, which we have now, you know, still we are all together fighting for, for democracy, you know, democracy in Belarus, for European future of Ukraine, for our, you know, and so on and so on. So that's why really, you know, we put into the title of this, you know, conversation also some kind of uh, political wording, you know, how to move from Lublin Triangle to Lublin Quadruple, which for me sounds quadruple. I don't know if that's a correct, you know, <laughs> translation of that, you know, <laughs> geometrical figure, but that is what what we what we need to have in mind. Really, we are, you know, grand grandsons of of set of May, you know, uh, uh, constitution, and our 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 task and our and our responsibility is not only to look into the past, but also to look into the future where those ideas really still are very valid and our experience is also very important. So that's my, my introductory, you know, uh, uh, what now I would like to ask uh, Radoslav Sikorsky, who does not need, you know, any introduction, who is now also our colleague in, in European Parliament, Radoslav, you know, again, five minutes or around, you know, for your, you know, for your statement, please. Just unmute yourself, unmute. Okay. okay. Thank you, Prime Minister. Uh, uh, th thank you for the idea uh, and thank you for the invitation. And I think it's particularly significant 
that a former uh, a prime minister of Lithuania initiates such a um, meeting because um, it wasn't until so long ago that uh, I would, am I right in thinking that the majority of historians in Lithuania regarded um, the period of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth as a period of Polish domination rather than a joint federation. And I think it's a wonderful um, common rethinking of our history in the light of our membership in, in other confederation uh, with some federal features. And I, I think it's an excellent uh, development. Um, uh, there was the constitution of the 3rd of May. There was then the uh, reciprocal guarantee of the two nations in October of the year, which transformed a federation into a, a a more or less unitary state. And I think it's a very interesting constitutional development. Uh, let's remember that um, the, the constitution was really adopted in a parliamentary coup. Uh, the, the procedures were not observed. Um, uh, and it was a very controversial document. Uh, Catholicism was established as a state religion in a multi-religious uh, society, which of course produced resistance. Uh, serfdom was reaffirmed. Uh, this was a democracy for the landed elites. And um, uh, German vettings uh, were um, to be the hered hereditary monarchs of the Polish Lithuanian uh, Commonwealth. This would be very controversial today. Um, but I would say this was a, a product of Polish enlightenment um, in the European spirit something like our reform process that, that, that they were crowned with our membership in the EU and what we've done since then. And it was brought down by uh, traditionalists who were convinced that they were defending traditional freedoms uh, in alliance with the more reactionary uh, part of the Catholic Church and with help uh, from uh, Russia. As you said yourself, the German alliance proved uh, unreliable and in fact contributed to the failure. Historians argue whether it was a good idea because if we'd done nothing in other 10 years and the Napoleonic Wars and the state may have survived and that would have had very important uh, consequences. Um, uh, it was also an ideological provocation. Uh, it was, in some senses, too progressive, certainly for Russia and for, and for Berlin. Um, I draw two lessons from this. Number one, I believe that those Lithuanians who participated in the Commonwealth were Lithuanian patriots. And therefore, you can be a member of a federation that you do not control, in which you are, a, you are a minority stakeholder, and it can still be a good thing. And there are obvious lessons for today. And uh, secondly, um, uh, that when you do something um, revolutionary uh, in, the, in the positive sense like this, you always have to take into account the international context because the constitution failed because the war in its defense was defeated by stronger powers. Um, and I think this is our perennial mistake that we do not take into account the international con context. So let me finish by saying that, yes, we have something to celebrate, but we should remember what actually happened because there are interesting, important lessons uh, that can be drawn uh, for today. Um, the constitution didn't save the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, but it meant that the, the country went, went down in honor and not in disgrace. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Radislav. Thanks a lot. Now I'm asking uh, my colleague Jonas, uh, with, uh, who has all, 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 all the power to, uh, uh, on technology to put uh, video of uh, Svetlana Tsikhanovskaya, who is not present with us, but she she sends us all the congratulations, especially for us. Jonas, please. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear friends of democratic Belarus, 
The Constitution of 1791 has a special place in our past and our present. It was the combination of political, social and economic reforms in the Commonwealth. The state where the ancestors of Poles, Lithuanians, Ukrainians and Belarusians lived together for centuries. Our cultures may have different memories of that period, but what we all remember is that it was the Republic with the ideal of democracy and the rule of law established by the Constitution. I'm personally proud of the fact that that Constitution was the first in Europe and the second in the world. It launched a new historical perspective of Belarus, Lithuania, Poland and Ukraine. Two great uprisings of the 19th century in 1831 and 1863 were also based on the ideals of that constitution. Quite often it happens that civil and human rights need to be defended. In 18th century, it was our common hero, Tadeusz Kostiuszka, who fought in defense of the constitution of the Commonwealth. In 21st century, it's millions of Belarusians who peacefully fight for their rights. Every speaker at today's conference who is working to advance human rights in Belarus is following the path of our heroes from the past. Belarusians need your help, your voices, your principal choices to defend their right for human dignity. Kostyushka fought in wars with weapons, and we are fighting too, but with peaceful means. You can help us in this fight with words of support on social media, by asking your government officials to sanction Lukashenko's regime, writing articles about the situation in Belarus, providing assistance to human rights defenders, victims of the repressions, journalists, striking workers. I hope that today we can learn from our history and see how we can share the heroes of our ancestors. I call on us all to become heroes. At the moment, it means helping Belarus. We need your drive for justice, for our freedom and yours. Diakui. Yes, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, uh, Svetlana. Thanks a lot to her team. I see a lot of uh, familiar faces here who helped us uh, to organize this video, video uh, statement since Svetlana is, is uh, traveling somewhere in Europe. Now I turn to my good friend, uh, Representative Ukrainian Rada, Ivan Krulko, who uh, is also the leader uh, of uh, his uh, of Ukrainian delegation to Euronest Parliamentary Assembly and who was co-president for last several years of that uh, uh, body, European, European body or, or Euronest Parliamentary Assembly. And Ivan really, Pleasure to see you, and please, floor is yours. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Kubilius. Uh, it, it's a pleasure for me uh, to, to be a part of this interesting uh, discussion. Uh, on behalf of Ukrainian delegation in Parliamentary Assembly uh, of Euronest, I congratulate uh, uh, Poland uh, on your constitutional day. Uh, the adoption of the 3rd of May Constitution was a milestone not only in the statehood of Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, but also in history of constitutional law, international relations, and in the growth of democracy. Uh, it is widely considered to be one of the world's greatest document of freedom. Uh, it was adopted to ensure more freedom and political equality on its territory, territory and open up prospects of the further transformation of the state system. Uh, 230th anniversary of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth Constitution remains a powerful symbol uh, of the people's pursuit of liberty and justice. It was the people's desire for freedom that led to Poland's rabbit uh, as an independent country in 1918. Uh, you know uh, about the uh, situation in Ukraine and Ukrainians had the same desire for their independence uh, at all stages of the uh, struggle. 
even now we have to defend our country and all of Europe from Russian aggression every day. The armed conflict has killed more than 40, 14,000 people and number of physically injured during the war was exceeded 24,000. In addition, more than 1.6 million of Ukrainian citizens have been entirely displaced. Uh, therefore, we must really even more to counter uh, these threats, the threats uh, of, uh, uh, of Russian aggression. The common pursuit of liberty and justice that inspired Poland and Lithuania to cost communists. The same feeling helps the Ukrainian people to restrain the Kremlin's imperialist manners. Uh, cooperation in the European Union and NATO based on common values and democratic principle shows that Poland remains our close neighbor today and uh, share similar views on many relevant issues. Uh, our nations are uh, bound by strong historical ties. Uh, the constitution and the slogan for our and your freedom inspired entire generation in the struggle for freedom and independence. So are you hear me? It's okay. Everything is okay. Now you you switched off. Unmute yourself. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Um, democracy is having a hard time, but I am confident that it is this time of security challenges and global pandemic. Uh, our freedom uh, nation will once again show its best qualities and success in overcoming uh, the crisis. I look forward to seeing our friendship and partnership, especially at the parliamentary level, grow even stronger in the years to come. Uh, taking this opportunity, I would like to express my gratitude to the co-president of the Euronest Parliamentary Assembly, Mr. Andreas Kubilius, for organization of this online discussion and to all our colleagues from Lithuania and Poland and from Ukraine and Belarus, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, values. Uh, we, we are on democratic, uh, uh, democratic positions. And uh, I would like to wish you, uh, of uh, all of you, health and uh, prosperity. And we will, I, I hope, uh, we will win in uh, all our uh, challenges. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Ivan. Thanks a lot, really. Thanks a lot. Good luck and, and all, all the best in Ukraine and for Ukraine. And now I turn to our colleague, uh, uh, Vladimir Simosiewicz, former Prime Minister of, of Poland, now also member of European Parliament uh, from Social Democrat groups. Uh, Vladimir, please, floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon to you all. Uh, Andrius, uh, really uh, uh, very deep thank you for organizing this uh, discussion. It's really fascinating for me to learn more about uh, the way that uh, our common past, uh, including that kind of events as adoption of, of Constitution of the 3rd of May, is being perceived by our neighbors, by our friends, uh, and in, uh, in the past, uh, our uh, compatriots, uh, people from the same country, coming from the same country. Celebrations usually are not the, the best occasion uh, to talk about the truth, uh, rather about uh, myths and legends. Uh, and uh, uh, that's uh, quite normal, quite understandable. However, we should uh, think about that constitution uh, uh, as realistic as possible, uh, because this is a kind of condition to uh, be able to use it as a kind of lesson to allow us to, to come to some, uh, some rational conclusions. So that was, of course, a very important effort to save the country, our common country. Yes, of course, also to modernize it, but uh, that um, modernization was uh, not a very strong element of it. Uh, political modernization, yes, in a sense, you mentioned abolishing of uh, 
liberal veto, uh, the, uh, the, the constitution uh, uh, was to end the system of electing monarchs, which was of course uh, dam uh, damaging uh, uh, the country, the state. Uh, but uh, in terms of any progressive um, uh, regulations, I, I just can only speak about uh, 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 confirming the personal rights of the uh, town people, of the residents of the towns, that's all. Uh, no, no, nothing else. Uh, uh, as Radek uh, mentioned, the Catholic religion was, uh, uh, was um, recognized as the official state uh, uh, religion of the country, where there were so many denominations, people of uh, representing various ethnic, national groups, religious, etc., religions, and so on and so on. But yes, that was an effort to save the country because uh, uh, beginning, in my opinion, somewhere in, uh, in mid 17th century, Polish-Lithuanian kingdom uh, uh, was losing its uh, earlier power and significance in Europe uh, due to many uh, reasons, uh, political, demographic, uh, et cetera, et cetera, uh, including those um, the domestic uh, uh, characteristic for the political system that existed, but also, and this is one of the lessons for, for us already today, also today, that was, of course, the effect of what we call today the foreign interference in our democracy. <laughs> and we know very well what, what did it mean uh, uh, in 17th and 18th century. Uh, uh, in fact, the same, with use of different instruments that, and a little bit different uh, methods, channels uh, of disinformation, of corruption, uh, et cetera, et cetera, but uh, with the same target and with the same effects. So. Uh, so we, we of course, uh, shall uh, remember about those who wrote, uh, who adopted constitution. However, again, I have to say that uh, that majority, voting majority, which adopted the constitution, had to use some procedural tricks to have it. Uh, otherwise, it, it wouldn't be possible. But of course, we also have to remember very well about uh, the other part of the society, those traitors who fought with constitution, who fought, in fact, with, with the country, with the king, with the parliament, and together with Russia and Prussia, uh, dem demolished, destroyed Poland uh, for, for a very long uh, period of time. And uh, not all of them were motivated by their selfish interests. Uh, many of them uh, uh, acted uh, because of their ignorance, because of their lack of understanding uh, uh, what was going on and what was necessary to be done. So um, uh, I would like to say, uh, not having uh, more time, that uh, on the one hand, I think it would be really great for all of us today uh, to talk more about those elements of the past. Uh, more than 220 years after collapse of a common country, common state, Maybe it is a good moment in time to, to rethink uh, what, we believe, what we believe it was for all of us, what kind of role was played by our common country in that time. Uh, and then uh, uh, kind of uh, lesson for today, for, for the present time, reality always is changing. It is absolutely important to follow it, to understand it, and to, uh, uh, to draw, uh, uh, wise and proper uh, conclusions uh, and to take decisions in time. The, the, the decision about constitution of the May the 3rd was in fact taken uh, too late. It was already not possible to save the country. I believe that we also today face a lot of uh, uh, equally important and sometimes risky challenges and we should be brave enough to face them and to uh, find uh, right solutions in the right time. The best solutions which are late uh, mean nothing. Uh, and uh, this is kind of lesson we should draw from the experience of that constitution we are talking today about. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, uh, Vladimir. Really very good, good conclusions. Well. I do not see Vadim Halichuk uh, from Ukraine for time being, so I will jump immediately then to next speaker, which we have on the list, Petras, Petras Ostravichus. Uh, well, 
again, you know, very well known in the European Parliament and also in Lithuania, and I think in all this community, you know, uh, well, that does not need any introduction. At least I can tell, uh, you know, the secrets that he was leading uh, all our negotiations, you know, towards EU. So, Atras, uh, now he is member of European Parliament, a new group. Uh, uh, but, uh, well, I hope that you can switch a little bit from history to, to the future. And with your experience, you know, on negotiations, what would be your 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 story how to have you know the whole uh, you know uh, set of may union you know uh, of all the four countries back into another union you know yeah please thank you andres uh, uh, thank you for gathering uh, us together on this very special day on uh, on the occasion of uh, adopting the Constitution of Commonwealth, uh, which, um, which was at that time a very bright star in a, in a quite a dark uh, skies of uh, over the Europe. And indeed, colleagues, uh, if we look at, uh, at, uh, at the time period when a constitution was uh, approved, well, it looks like the a month of May means uh, and has a very special meaning in European integration history. So our constitution may, uh, it comes from May, uh, the European uh, um, Union's uh, Communities Declaration, again, uh, uh, adopted in, in, in the month of May. So let's not forget uh, uh, this occasion and go forward. Indeed, uh, Andres, you're right. I mean, we should and we have to know history, but uh, we have to draw a clear line between the history and, and its future. But a couple of words, uh, special words on this constitution. So, in fact, uh, we as uh, peoples of, um, of the territory, which was called under the Commonwealth uh, name, um, must be very proud of um, having this historical experience of the constitution, which was, uh, I think, uh, a great uh, step forward. First of all, the constitution was adopted after very systematic, well-organized work of two, uh, two parliaments. And it was not just occasional happening or something which came out uh, unexpectedly. No, it was a systematic approach. It was a rules-based uh, and st state uh, governance-based uh, uh, legislation, which at that time was not, I have to admit, a very traditional thing, uh, even uh, in a most advanced part of the world as Europe was. And I quote uh, uh, what, uh, uh, how the constitution was described uh, by the Times uh, at that time, I mean, the, mag the British magazine, as rational, practical, and liberal. I am proud <laughs> liberal to, be, to have this description from British about uh, uh, our common uh, commonwealth. It's, it's already something. But colleagues, uh, the constitution came uh, at times of... Uh, very special, inter uh, with a very special international background. Uh, huge uh, military tensions, Russian-Turkey uh, war, um, uh, Swedish-Russian uh, war in, in the Baltic region um, have influenced lots of uh, probably events uh, surrounding the adoption of this constitution. And um, interference from uh, third countries, first of all, uh, the Russian Empire was not a secondary uh, event at all. Uh, just looking at uh, all efforts of Russia to weaken the main message of, of the constitution, try to present an alternative as uh, uh, Tar uh, Targonitsa Confederation was, was a very, I would say, smart geopolitical move in order to weaken our our common state. And if look to from, from, uh, from the past to today, I see very much the same. For me, uh, kind of uh, Tar uh, Targonitsa Confederation uh, happening, uh, initiated by, uh, by the uh, Russian uh, um, uh, emperors, uh, uh, Yekaterina II, is like you know an action of Russian Federation against Ukraine after Maidan events. 
they presented a so-called alternative of People's Republic, over the sudden being uh, established on occupied by, uh, parts of Eastern Ukraine. It's not just to uh, move uh, along with the kind of Ukraine's uh, uh, future-based uh, uh, considerations, but to kind of slice down and to slow down as much as possible any advance of, uh, of Ukraine towards uh, <clears throat> Europe. Same we see in terms of Belarus. Uh, the interference of, uh, of Kremlin is well written, it's well registered, and we should be not naive that uh, Kremlin will follow uh, kind of uh, modernization, uh, possible modernization with the democratic opposition in, in power in, in Belarus. So we should not forget historical lessons in, in this regard and to see as retrograde, indeed, past-based uh, events somehow repeating itself in, in modern times. It doesn't mean that we should be afraid of this. No, we have to be ready for this and probably assist um, two nations uh, as Ukrainian and uh, Belarusian to go with us along as much as possible. Well, we are in a complete political solidarity with uh, uh, progressive uh, political forces of those two nations. But probably we have to do even more to help them, you know, to create this kind of uh, legislative basis for advancement, as in Ukraine, they do a lot uh, fighting uh, corruption, uh, establishing new, new laws, reforming sectorial, sec, uh, sectorial economies and, and, um, and bringing new legislation on local level. But um, probably we, we didn't exhaust uh, all the kind of instruments which we might uh, use from our experience in order to assist those nations. Because, let's be frank, the Commonwealth uh, heritage is not just in today's Poland or, or, or Lithuania. No, it's uh, you know, on the territory of Belarus as well as Ukraine. And uh, we have probably a responsibility, a historical responsibility to, uh, you know, to be in partnership, to stay in partnership and to be two leading nations uh, trying to integrate uh, European joint efforts in order to assist those two countries. So I'm looking forward to this, uh, to continue my partnership and cooperation with um, very good, uh, our Polish colleagues in the European Parliament, in the national parliaments of, um, um, of our states, in order to really to create this kind of spirit of uh, constitution of 1791 and to bring it over to today's um, uh, uh, historical period. Um, what should be said more? You know, um, I think the Constitution of 17, uh, 1791 is, a, is an example of European integration. No doubt about this. Um, and I'm proud that uh, Constitution was supported by federalists. Those who've been uh, um, for co-federation, uh, they've been fighting for modernity, um, a new historical page of this country and so on. It's undoubtable that European Union should undergo further European integration. In some sectors, in some parts, we really need uh, an advance. Of course, taking into consideration our people's uh, um, um, commitment, uh, their uh, readiness, I mean, for, for this European integration, but let's not shy away from historical moment to advance further on because uh, those uh, forces in the, in the East or some, somewhere else, I mean, they didn't vanish at all. I mean, they reshaped themselves, they have different uh, strategies, but they are still looking and uh, continuously disliking any progress on our side. So I will finish with the kind of uh, classical uh, expression uh, to freedom of ours and yours. Uh, and looking forward, I mean, to, to work with uh, us and all of you in order to have a common future as well, European future. Thank you, Andres. Well, thanks a lot, Petra. Thanks a lot. And now, really, it's my privilege and honor to invite Anna Fotiga. Uh, again, you know, no need to introduce, you know, former uh, Foreign Affairs Minister, now member for Open Parliament, uh, 
ECR group uh, and really big, big, big friend of all of us, you know, and we, we know that, you know, always Anna is, is you know, all our discussion. So Anna Fotiga, please, floor is yours. Thank you, Andrews. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, well, uh, all the best on the 3rd of May to, to all of us, uh, because yes, that is true. It is uh, the tradition of, of all of us. Uh, it's worth uh, to repeat the uh, words of, of Svetlana Tsikhanovska that uh, the, the constitution of the 3rd of May was the first modern constitution of Europe. We may discuss whether it was complete or whether we should go farther. Both of us then the union was called con Commonwealth of both nations treated you uh, equally, but actually it was uh, the constitution and commonwealth of many nations. Uh, and, and it was proven uh, earlier and later that, and in particular by fathers of the constitution of 3rd of May. Actually, the name of Poland was used in the constitution twice, two times. Once when uh, enumerating titles of uh, the Queen of uh, the King of Poland, King of Poland, uh, Grand Duke of Lithuania, and so on. And second one when it was repeating probably omission, when when it was speaking uh, town or township, our Polish. But because actually it was uh, uh, simply on purpose that Hugo Kowonte decided to use the word homeland always to, to the commonwealth of, of us all. Uh, when I, on my way uh, from previous year's first Kalinowski conference uh, uh, on my way home, I, I, I stopped uh, to visit the, the graveyard, small graveyard in the village of Kopchovo, where uh, there is a hero uh, of three nations, uh, Emilia Plater, on, on Lithuanian territory. She was buried there. And so many, so many places where we can link our our common history, surely, surely it is uh, the constitution of 3rd of May. <sighs> yeah, many times I used to think that most probably it should be taken earlier, but, but Petras was right. It was very deliberate uh, action of uh, uh, many actors and, and taken uh, unanimously, almost unanimously in, in both uh, Lithuanian, Lithuanian and Polish uh, parliaments and, and by uh, elites of, of, of uh, uh, both uh, countries. It was extremely important and it was taken, this step was taken by using shrewdly and wisely window of opportunity when Russia was engaged in, in a quite dire war with Turkey and, and Sweden. Immediately after, after finishing uh, this stage of the war, because uh, 18th century was many, uh, witnessed many, many stages of, of uh, Russian-Turkish war, immediately after the war, 14 months after adoption of constitution, the intervention happened. Uh, Russian, Russian army intervened Poland. And then uh, after dire occupation, once more, Kościuszko uprising. All of, of our nations were engaged in this. Actually, Kościuszko was born in current Belarus uh, and, and, and his uh, uh, 
family seat, the endowment of, of uh, the king and or grand duke of, of Lithuania and that time was done in ancient Belarusian language. And many examples like this, to name Konstanty Ostrogski, who is the patron of uh, Polish, Lithuanian and Ukrainian brigade. Today, we are here mostly and predominantly for Belarusians and Ukrainians, because all of us understand that we have to stay united in order to, to help them, assist them, stand by them. And, and who knows it better than Poles and Lithuanians uh, that it is in extremely important. And, and now we live in different uh, circumstances. We are, we are uh, linked by, by the European Union. That's extremely important. But also remember that uh, Kościuszko, the hero of us all, was also and is also a hero of the United States of America, fighting for their uh, independence. And that means that for all of us, transatlantic link is of enormous vital importance as well. And currently, all of us, we know this. Uh, of course, we are, we are uh, in favor of European integration. We know that there is certain path for Ukraine still. I think that it is obvious that we support Euro-Atlantic way of and path for Ukraine. We also know that step by step, Belarusian society has to obtain their freedom from uh, oppressive regime but also we hope that uh, it is to come closer and closer to us. Uh, so all the best for all of us on our freedom path. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, uh, Anna Fatiga. And now I turn to Pavel Latushka again. There is no need to introduce. No, we know what Pavel was doing and what he is doing really. And uh, that is really our, our, our pleasure and honor to have Pavel Latushka together with us, you know. And Pavel, please, floor is yours. Viktor Bobarika, Eduard Bobarika, Dmitry Karako, Igor Losik, and Sergei Sparish. There are only five names out of 362 political prisoners who are touched in prisons. I will mention five names at each of my international speeches and meetings. Dear friends, dear colleagues, I would like to congratulate you all on the anniversary of the constitution of the Zhezh Pospolita adopted on 3rd of May. It is 230 years ago when the first codified constitution in Europe was adopted, which also applied to the Belarusian territories. Now the constitution of Belarus is a paper that means nothing to a dictator. One of the fundamental principles of that historical constitution states that everything and everywhere must be decided by a majority vote. This is how the Belarusian people who are direct heirs of uh, this greatest document elected Svetlana Tikhanovskaya as their legitimate president on the 9th of August 2020. Since then, the dictator Lukashenko has held unconstitutional power in Belarus. Today, my country is uh, experiencing the most massive political repression in Europe in the last 40 years. In terms of the number of repressions per capita in Belarus over the last eight months, more people have been exposed to repression than during the martial law in Poland in the 80s. These figures are truly shocking. 362 political prisoners, 35,000 detentions and arrests, 3,000 political criminal cases. 
tens of thousands of dismissals all over the country, people being fired and planning to be repressed for signing for an alternative candidate, among other things. Yesterday, 80 officers were stripped of their ranks for speaking out against violence. 4,650 people reported torture, including the rape of men and women. Nine people were killed and zero, zero criminal cases were opened against the actions of law enforcement officers carrying out Lukashenko's orders. And this repressive machine is only gaining momentum. Uh, five days ago, during only one day on April 30th, 14 persons were sen sentenced in the city of Pinsk, uh, who in total received 83 and a half years in prison. The propaganda of Lukashenko's regime is trying by all means to make it look like everything is calm in Belarus beating people right under the entrances of their houses and not allowing them to gather even in their own backyards. But even despite this, Belarusians all over the country, from small villages to the capital city, continue to find ways to express their opinions and fight every day for their basic rights, for the future of their children and for the freedom of those who are abused in prison. And I hope that they will come out uh, on the 9th uh, of May against fascism in Belarus. Today, I am a European. I appeal to Europeans. We have had many words of solidarity, but it's time to act. Lukashenko understands only the language of sanctions. It is in your power to impose effective sanctions against the dictator, which will stop violence and murder in our country. Back in April, the National Anti-Crisis Management proposed a number of European countries to hold a high-level international political conference on Belarus. This conference could bring the Belarusian issue back to the central agenda of European and world powers, to be a factor of real support and motivation of the Belarusian society and to clearly state the position that the preservation of the sovereignty and independence of Belarus is priority for Europe and the whole world. To underline that the main principle for any state, including Belarus, is the observance of human rights and um, freedoms. The conference would have been able to develop algorithm of real influence on the illegitimate Lukashenko regime using both sanctions and other methods of pressure for democratic reforms and would have attracted attention of European and world media to the issue of Belarus. We're grateful to Svetlana Tikhanovskaya who supported that initiative to hold an international political conference on Belarus. Belarusian people, together with Polish and Lithuanians, uh, strive to democratic standards in 19th century. Today, again, we are striving for democracy. Now, together, in our democratic unity of Belarus, we count upon the support of world leaders, our neighbors, Poland, Lithuania, and Ukraine. Thank you for your attention. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot, Pavel. Thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Latushka. Really, all the best. And your your ideas, we know, and and really, we are we are trying to do on our side all 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 what we can and what what is needed for democratic Belarus to prevail. Now, uh, it's my honor to invite uh, Mrs. Yulia Klimenko a member of uh, Verkhovna Rada and uh, who represents Golos party and who is one of the leader of uh, a special group of members of Rada, uh, which was established to support uh, democratic Belarus. So, dear Yulia, please, floor is yours. 
Thank you, Andreas. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, happy to see all of you. And first of all, congratulations to Poland and Lithuania of this anniversary. And uh, this is, uh, I think, um, not only our history, but also uh, our proud that uh, this is the second uh, constitution uh, in the world that was uh, established uh, by um, uh, 300 years ago. So, and thank you for Andreas because you uh, actually uh, brought back uh, to the agenda the constitution ideas. Uh, constitution ideas very important, and we as Ukrainians uh, know uh, know it uh, much because we are fighting for our constitution and for our rights uh, uh, at least 30 years in the modern history. Uh, and uh, we are we uh, we remember it very well when you know in 2010 uh, actually turn our constitution back to the uh, Kuchma's time when uh, and and uh, uh, got uh, um, enormous rights and authority and power and use it uh, uh, as a as a um, uh, for the for his authoritarian regime, and we very well remember that in 2013, actually the uh, uh, the revolution of dignity started uh, um, also because of this change in constitution, and also that uh, uh, Yanukovych, um, uh, former president of Ukraine, he actually refused to sign uh, association agreement with the European Union in 2013, and we uh, in 2013 and 14 we've got uh, revolution and uh, uh, of dignity and then we have uh, got uh, uh We've got um, uh, actually uh, the invasion of Russia, Russia invasion, the full scale war that we have at this point of time. Uh, and since that, uh, Russia aggression uh, also wants to change our constitution uh, and uh, trying to uh, back on the table, uh, back on the table, uh, um, on the Minsk agreement and the framework of Minsk agreement, the idea of changing Ukrainian constitution and forcing to change us uh, uh, under Minsk agreement so the constitution uh, constitution uh, in ukraine is also uh, like a um, you know a very important thing that we are fighting for for many years and i think we uh, in modern time we should uh, uh, proceed and follow uh, the uh, idea of fighting for our constitution, because constitution is a framework of uh, uh, of uh, not only Ukrainian life, but, but all countries. Uh, um, and uh, we hope that we will, um, in, in, in our future, we will have um, a uh, real constitution with a uh, uh, real of human rights and uh, uh, implement it uh, not only on paper but in our uh, uh, everyday li lives. So um, actually, we are, as Ukraine, you know, struggling over, over the almost full scale war uh, with Russia. And so we are uh, fighting not only our constitutional rights uh, on our territories, on, on uh, trying to uh, push back Russia and uh, deoccupy our territories. We're also fighting with uh, internal enemies, so to say, with uh, corruption, with oligarchs and many other things uh, that uh, who are institutional capacity that we have. So uh, we, we have many things to do internally as a homework and externally on the on, uh, European arena and world arena, mm -hmm. uh, so to protect our rights in the constitution and not only constitution. So uh, th thanks a lot that we have this discussion and I think we will uh, proceed with this discussion for many times because sometimes people think that constitution it's a you know, artifact that uh, should uh, stay somewhere in the shelves, but no, no, because this is the basic rules of our life and we have to protect it. Um, th that's why we have to stay united and uh, to help each other. Uh, and that's why we are as a friendship group of, of Belarus, happy to help our neighbors uh, and uh, happy to, um, uh, to uh, discuss further uh, how we have to build uh, institutional capacity in Ukraine, in our countries, how to, uh, to, um, yeah, to help our neighbors to build, build constitutional capacity and uh, uh, also to protect our lives for normal, normal European life. And this week I'm traveling uh, um, uh, in Ukraine and I'm actually looking for the uh, castles because we will have a big renovation uh, program on, on the old uh, castles. And I would say that um, I uh, actually found the castles uh, starting 11th century and uh, all these castles um, were built by 
um, by Ukrainians, by Polish people, by Polish uh, hetmans, by uh, Lithuanian, by German, by Hungarian. So we have our uh, common history, even if you are looking to the uh, to our castles. So uh, let's stay. My main message: let's stay united and let's uh, move uh, with our um, with our ideas and implementing our ideas all together. Uh, otherwise, it's very difficult to uh, implement this idea. Yes, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Yulia. Thank, thank you very much. And, and good, good week, you know, for you traveling through Ukraine, very, very beautiful country. I, I did it on bicycles, you know, and I saw so many castles that still I, I, I want to come back, you know. Still yeah, not you're all, welcome uh, to come after yeah. coronavirus and all, yeah, have not a, all of them is, tour on yeah. castles because all of really. you have castles in our territory. <laughs> So really, what's what's the feeling is that you are you are traveling, you know, you are cycling through common history, you know, no difference, no difference in in, in castles, no difference in monasteries, you know, everything is very similar. Thanks a lot, Julia. Yes. Now I turn to uh, to Vital Vashakovsky. Again, you know, no need to introduce uh, former former foreign affairs minister of Poland, now member for Open Parliament, uh, ECR Group. Uh, Vital, please, floor is yours. Unmute yourself. Still. Castaneda. Maybe, yeah, maybe we shall come back to, to Witold. It's good to, to, to see his, that he is present, but something. Witold, can you, can you speak now? I see that you are muted, but your, your screen is empty. No, okay, let's, let's move then to next, and then we shall come back to Witold. Ne next speaker in my list is, uh, well, you as a solid, uh, again. No need to introduce, at least in Lithuania, you know, and in the European Parliament, uh, former former minister of uh, I don't know of everything, still <laughs> studying from from defense to health and and so on and so on. So now he's member of European Parliament. Really, it was a pleasure to see you, since he has very tough competition back home. In uh, he is competing for the leadership in Social Democrat Party. So it was a pleasure to see that you spend, you know. Uh, time with us on, on such a very intensive, you know, period of time for you. Please, Jozef, yeah. Thank you, Vitor. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Okay, thank you, Andres. Uh, thank you for your introduction. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Margarita and her friend. I have been very impressed from the for the beginning of our our conference. Indeed, it was very emotional one. And I would like to to join many previous speakers uh, commemorating the constitution uh, of uh, that, uh, of of May of uh, 1791. It was a progressive document, as many said. Only the first in Europe and second in the world. It, with a lot of modern ideas about the freedom and dignity enshrined in the text, it gave further inspiration for the other countries to reform uh, themselves. This political document should be celebrated by all nations of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, as you do know, Polish, Lithuanian, Belarus, Ukrainians, all of them uh, were active members of the state and made a contribution to the political life of the Commonwealth. Uh, unfortunately, the political situation of our common country was very difficult uh, by that time. Strong and aggressive neighbor did not allow for the Commonwealth to reform itself and to become a modern, progressive and strong state. Just a few years after this uh, last attempt for the modernization, the state uh, was annexed by its uh, neighbor and uh, 
ceased to exist for a very long time. But this constitution made a strong input in the thinking of, of many generations of our nation. And you mentioned about my political party, and I, I like in saying that then in 1896, the first of May, again the May, uh, Lithuanian Social Democratic Party was established. They repeat the text, and uh, it was written as the program, minimum of program, that we should reestablish independent democratic uh, state consisting of Lithuania, Poland, and other countries' uh, neighborhood in soft uh, federation, like now we have the European um, uh, Union. And uh, our states uh, later had a very different path to, to freedom. For Lithuania, it culminated by declaring the, its independence in 1918 and later uh, in the uh, uh, 1990s. The accession uh, to the European Union in uh, 2004 uh, and uh, NATO. Uh, for the cement the Lithuania position among the free European uh, countries. I hope that Belarus and Ukraine also soon will become a free state, uh, Belarus free from Tartarian uh, rule, and both of them free from the military aggression from the neighborhood. The constitution of uh, 3rd of May is a good time for all of us to forget what is in the history divided us and celebrate our common achievements and common history and heritage. I wouldn't like to, to end saying just for our and your freedom. I think that I would like to say that we need for more coordination and more cooperation for the future of Europe. Maybe thinking about our common position and activities in upcoming conference of the future of European Union. It would be very good uh, common efforts to, to say in one voice how we see the future, staying on the very strong uh, ground of our uh, glorious history. Thank you and good luck for all of you. Thanks a lot, Yosef. Thanks a lot and, and good luck for you personally. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, now I, I yeah I see that Witold Witold Wasikowski it looks like changed you know <laughs> technology maybe now it will work yeah Witold please floor is yours. Hi, can you can you see me can you hear me? We hear but not not so loudly as as we would like to hear but please try. Uh, let's try. Maybe maybe this is better. Uh, uh, so thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you very much for organizing this, uh, this, this meeting. I think that the history of uh, European integration is much more older than the history of the European Union. Poland and Lithuania started this, uh, to, to unite at the end of the 14th century. The process at that time covered uh, not only two kingdoms, uh, also covered and embraced uh, two nations. Um, uh, the union, of course, uh, was not perfect, but uh, it was uh, quite progressive uh, compared to other countries in, in Europe in the 16th, 17th, 18th century. And the union lasted almost to the end of the 18th century. Uh, facing the uh, strong and the belligerent neighbors, we tried to modernize uh, the Union uh, in, 19, in 1791, uh, adopting the, the Constitution uh, May the 1st. Uh, the, the attempt to reform the Union encountered strong opposition of the neighbors, mostly Russia and, uh, and Russia, like uh, Hungary and uh, like uh, Austrian Empire. Uh, I think the present attempt to modernize the, the countries of the region met with a similar hostility, and this similarity was noticed recently, a couple of days ago, by uh, Lithuanian President Malceva. Do his visit uh, to Warsaw and do his visit uh, and uh, his speech in the Polish, uh, Polish Parliament. Um, 
Poland and Lithuania managed to liberate uh, from Russian dominance in the, in the last um, uh, few decades uh, during the European times and became NATO and the European Union. Ukraine and Belarus uh, are less, uh, less lucky. I don't want to turn this discussion into historical seminars, so I, I try to discuss also what to do next. So, well, uh, we have to be wiser before the event, so we have to learn the lessons from the last uh, two centuries. And um, we are in a better situation than our compact with uh, two centuries ago because uh, we have many regional instruments of, uh, of integration. We have a business group, we have a uh, cooperation between business uh, group and the Baltic countries. We have uh, uh, BUSH 9, this is the, uh, the group of countries uh, belonging to, to NATO. Uh, we have um, treaties, initiatives, and recently last year we created the uh, Lublin Triangle, which is a cooperation of uh, Lithuania, Poland, and Ukraine to deal with our Eastern issues. So we have a number of instruments to deal with the regional problems. So first problem, of course, is to stop Russian uh, imperialist, Russian aggression. And as I mentioned, we have no deficit of instruments. Uh, how to deal with the Russian aggression? We have a uh, rather lack of will and determination to, to to stop this aggression. We need more sanctions and less equipment. We need to, uh, to create some kind of a uh, price tag for the part, at least a part of the Russian society for uh, for fighting Putin and uh, for, for, for for benefiting from the imperial. In, uh, uh, to the of, uh, of Putin. We have to first deprive Russia to accumulate uh, funds uh, uh, for aggression. And uh, North Stream, uh, the second, of course, is the main instrument. If we stop it, this is the biggest uh, instrument to deprive Russia to accumulate uh, the funds for. The aggression. The second problem, of course, is to Ukraine or, or, or rather the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. So, what to do? First, we have to help uh, to stop uh, further aggression, uh, and uh, we have to help uh, Ukraine to, uh, to, to defend itself. Uh, of course, we cannot help Ukraine to win the war with, with Russia, but we can help them. Providing them defensive weapons to defend themselves from the further escalation and further aggression. Uh, we, we can help them to progress with reforms. Uh, we can open the path to European integration. One of these paths to further European integration is to join uh, to the free speech initiatives by the countries like Ukraine, maybe in the future uh, to be allowed to say. And finally, I think I think that we have to create a new peace format. Uh, we have to go further from normal diplomacy, from new process to the larger front to counter uh, to confront Russia. I think in this larger front to counter uh, to confront Russia, we have to include uh, uh, friends and neighbors of of Ukraine, Baltic countries, Poland, Romania, possibly Turkey. So in this way, we can confront Russia with the larger front. Uh, the, the, the first is the, the Belarus, and we have too many dilemmas. Uh, should we talk to authorities or to marginalize them? Uh, should we find uh, authorities, uh, um, cooperative forces among the authorities of this, uh, this regime? Uh, so we encourage them to, to replace with a center. Uh, another area might could we discuss directly with Russia about the Belarus or just to concentrate and focus on me. Uh, the next dilemma is how to support the position, encourage them to uh, to move uh, in a vigorous activity, of course without a provocative uh, bloodshed, violence, domestic war. Uh, I think that uh, flowers and marches with uh, 
without a uh, real program how to change the regime, we will not change the, the regime. Uh, we, we have to encourage the Belarusian opposition to, to create the program to uh, not only to repeat the election. This is not quite sexy for the for the population in Belarus. We have to encourage the opposition to create more attractive pro democratic pro European program. And of course, coming back to the May 1st constitution from the end of the 18th century. Uh, we, uh, Poland, Lithuania, and other uh, countries around, which were part of this uh, uh, attempt to modernize itself two centuries ago, we succeeded. We succeeded. We uh, emancipated themselves from the Russian dominance. We democratized uh, ourselves and we joined the uh, liberal democratic market. Uh, we joined the institutions like European and NATO. So we have many experience to pass to our friends in Ukraine and Belarus, uh, and uh, we can help how to succeed also for, for, for them. Uh, thank you very much. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Witold. Thanks a lot. Now I would like to ask uh, Franek Vachorka again. No need to introduce Senior Advisor to Svetlana Sikhanovska. Franek, pleasure to see you, and please, floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kobidus. Thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, I'm always pleased to see friends from uh, Ukraine, Lithuania, Poland, the European Union countries. Uh, definitely, um, last years um, helped us to understand each other better, uh, helped us to build uh, ties and connections between our uh, countries, uh, helped us to learn more about our common history. Uh, for Belarusians, this, um, I would say, regional integration started two years ago when uh, Kastus Kalinowski remains uh, were found in Vilnius and many Belarusians, thousands of Belarusians celebrated this event uh, along with um, uh, Poles, Lithuanians and Ukrainians. And uh, we even um, have the joke how the revolution started in Belarus. So first they found uh, bones of Kalinowski and then it started. Uh, and it's true, it's true, because Belarusian uh, protest, Belarusian uprising, it's connected with national symbols, with um, uh, appeals to uh, our history. Um, Belarusians understood that they are um, uh, self-sufficient, powerful um, uh, nation, uh, and Belarusians um, can afford themselves to live in a free democratic country. And more than that, they are ready to fight for this. And the principles of democracy, uh, human rights, um, people are fighting for in Belarus right now. These are principles we're all also shared by uh, all the nations living in the Pospolita. And these principles were uh, in built in the uh, constitution document. Uh, we uh, are very happy that uh, the recent events uh, helped our nations to, uh, to get along, to work together. And uh, we are particularly thankful to Ukrainians, Poles and Lithuanians who hosted so many Belarusians, refugees from very different sectors. Uh, Lithuania hosted our national leader. Uh, Poland hosted uh, many coordination council uh, members, as well as uh, cultural activists, athletes, um, human rights defenders uh, found the temporary home in Ukraine, primarily in Kyiv. And this um, wouldn't be possible without common shared history and understanding that we, four nations of the Eastern Europe, we have to help each other. And one day Belarusians will uh, pay back by friendship, by good relationship, you can uh, always trust us. And I think uh, the events like this, they, they just empower our feeling of, of unity. Um, two weeks ago, uh, actually 10 days ago, Svetlana Tsikhanovska, our national leader, had the call with the president of Poland, uh, Duda, and they discussed uh, the original collaboration, including uh, Baltic Black Sea Union or Lublin Quartet, I think this is something that we have to uh, think uh, now, um, how we will be seeing our friendship and our collaboration in five, 10 and 50 years. And it's also important uh, fighting, fighting for democracy and freedom. It's also important to not forget about culture uh, and about uh, symbols. 
um, about things that are uh, somewhere deeply in minds and conscious uh, consciousness of our of our nations but we should uh, promote our culture to each other i think on one hand we understand that we are closed but on the other hand we we know so little about each other and i think this is the direction we should work already now on this cultural exchanges student exchanges uh, scientific exchanges um, in lithuania there is a congress of belarus and researchers uh, happening every year uh, and there are many other venues that we can use to uh, to promote our our common heritage again thank you uh, for organizing thank you mr kubilius i see many 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 friends here um uh, we, we really appreciate uh, the support for Belarus and please um, let's um, uh, let's hope that in very nearest future Belarus will be able to uh, uh, to, to, to stand along with other presidents uh, as it happened uh, two days ago in the Warsaw. Well, thanks a lot, Renek. Thanks a lot, really. Pleasure as always to see you and to discuss and to talk and especially about culture. You know, I would be happy really to have some kind of uh, joint you know kitchen event you know to enjoy each other's kitchen you know <laughs> that would be really great now really i will change a little bit you know order since i know that gigas Podolonis, gimantas Podolonis really needs to run and uh, you know uh, he's chair of our foreign affairs committee and former former diplomat former ambassador and also initiator of uh, among many things which he initiated but he initiated also kalinovsky conference so, Jigis, please, floor is yours. Thank you, dear friends, and thank you, Andrius, for always putting us uh, together and uh, pushing us to think uh, strategically. Um, I was not able to listen uh, the beginning of your debate, but uh, I would very much agree with a lot of things uh, was said uh, before me, what I heard. Well, uh, I remember when I presented my credentials to uh, President Obama, and he said, thank you for your generals like Kosciuszko who've been fighting for our freedom. So really, uh, you know, uh, uh, commemorating uh, constitution, we should remember that Belarus, uh, you know, Belarusian nation born such, a, you know, figures of such a magnitude, uh, uh, heroes uh, that was fighting for the freedom of American nation uh, for the whole continent, uh, or another hero that was mentioned, uh, Kalinowski. Yeah. So, you know, th this inspiration uh, uh, comes back uh, to us, uh, and we are the generations that have to continue uh, the mission of those heroes. Uh, and I remember well uh, what Minister Anna Fotiga told in the first Kalinowski conference. Uh, yeah, after meeting with Svetlana and Franek, she said, well, friends, remember that in Poland, it took more or less nine years. Uh, and uh, um, yeah, it struck me then, I was starting to think, and actually looking back to the history, I think now in Belarus, we have a situation uh, like in Poland, martial law was introduced after first revolutionary romantic period, you had repressions, uh, you had very bad things, killings, imprisonment, and uh, I, well, after that, you remember what happened. You had then the second visit of John Paul II and the third, and uh, actually Poland and Polish nation won the battle. Then we picked up that battle in Lithuania, uh, uh, Andrius was organizing our resistance here. I was a young person and with father of uh, Franek, you know, we've been all standing on those barricades uh, um, uh, around our uh, parliament and we won that battle. Now we, you know, shine and our success is inspiring a lot of nations. So now uh, time has come uh, for Belarusian nation. You are somewhere at the level of martial law but uh, it's irreversible. Uh, what we felt together with Franek and Andrus and others in second Kalinowski conference, the whole civilized world is already united. I'm former diplomat. I know that this is very difficult to achieve, honestly. When you have on one side, Washington, Berlin, Paris, London, 
not to talk about regional states when you have on your side OSCE. So now we just have to get this team to finish the work together with Belarusian nation. In, in a way, uh, democratic nations were supporting Lithuania even for 50 years of occupation. And I think we have unique window of opportunity. opportunity. You know, in diplomacy, even if you have greatest ideas, this window of opportunity should be opened and then you can do this, do it. You can realize your dreams. I think this window of opportunity is new Biden administration. We have still maybe three and a half years left. Uh, and let's use every day of this administration together with the best friends in Washington and all other countries to come to the final uh, victory of freedom and democracy in Belarus. I know that this is just a question of time. I remember when Western friends were telling it to us in Lithuania, it was difficult to believe that this time will come when we will be, you know, even EU and NATO member states. But look, it's now 17 years when we are in the EU and NATO already. So, uh, you know, let's fight uh, and not only Belarusians, you know, Ukrainians, Georgians, Moldovans, uh, even, you know, also our friends, Russians, you know, they fight just to be human, just to be European. Uh, and uh, I think this nightmare of KGB regimes uh, hopelessly killing us, uh, imprisoning friends like Pavel Severinets, uh, his, uh, 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 his trial should uh, come on May 12th, somewhere in Mogilov in closed uh, 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 kind of court uh, uh, premises. Well, they will win, that's for sure. And when they will win, they will be the heroes of the nation. So uh, we have heroes now, let's fight, let's continue. And I'm sure uh, that we will win together. Thank you, Andrus, and thank you, friends. Well, thanks, Zhigis. Uh, uh, since we are really, you know, both uh, serious, uh, we have serious discussion about the future, but also we are celebrating. You know, since we're celebrating, we have Margarita, but uh, now I would like to uh, ask her not to sing, but to answer my question, you know. Uh, since she is really very active, uh, not only on the stage uh, as a singer, but also also as a very, very no, well-known public activist and so on. So, Margarita, скажите, yeah, I, I will turn to Russian language, you know, there is translation. Margarita, скажите, пожалуйста, что, что изменилось в жизни большинства белорусов после событий э, в августе 20-го? Э, каким образом арт-протест, протест вообще повлиял на образ жизни белорусов? Вот. Ваше, Спасибо, ваше слово. Андрес, да, за этот вопрос. Сейчас наша нация проснулась и воссоединилась, к сожалению, после событий августа 2020 года. Культура, которая где-то, может быть, была не так широка, белорусская, национальная, современная, традици... традиционная, она сейчас вошла в жизнь как... каждого белоруса. Люди вспомнили про исторически национальные символы, люди гордятся ими, хотят, чтобы они стали официальными. Сейчас люди поют на наши народные песни, и, что немаловажно, они начинают говорить на белорусском языке. Когда с кем-то, например, созваниваемся, то приветствием выступает «Живе Беларусь!» И адекватный, нормальный белорус тебе ответит «Живе вечно!» либо «Живе вольно!» Когда я, например, сейчас спрашиваю у белоруса «Как дела?», белорус мне отвечает «Я в ожидании!» А что значит «я в ожидании»? Все ждут победы, все ждут, когда наконец-таки уйдет Лукашенко. За столом поднимаются бокалы за победу. А некоторые белорусы вообще, да, некоторые белорусы вообще отказались от алкоголя и хранят дома бутылку хорошего шампанского, чтобы открыть и выпить, когда наконец-то уйдет Лукашенко и когда наступит наша долгожданная победа. Во время разговоров очень часто слышится фраза «вот когда мы победим, 
Все говорят о победе и все ждут эту победу. И нам она очень нужна. Что еще интересно? Интересно то, что в Беларуси сейчас развиваются дворовые комьюнити. И раньше люди жили сами по себе, даже не общались с соседями, не здоровались, были незнакомы с ними. А тут все соседи сейчас знают друг друга, ходят друг к другу в гости, они встречаются во дворах, собираются на чаепитие, поют наши песни и таким образом поддерживают друг друга и поддерживают наш боевой дух. Я хочу поблагодарить за поддержку белорусов и Беларуси, Европейский Союз и особенные слова благодарности Литве и Польше. Эта поддержка позволяет нам продолжить борьбу за свободу и за демократию в Беларуси. Спасибо всем большое. Живе Беларусь! Живе Беларусь вечно! Спасибо, Маргарита! Спасибо! Действительно, и мы храним хорошую бутылку шампанского ожидая вашу победу. Спасибо. Спасибо вам. Uh, yeah. Now I will turn to Frankowski, our colleague, uh, also member for European Parliament. Uh, uh, he leads a special working group on, on Belarus in uh, Euronest Parliamentary Assembly, but still we do not have uh, uh, normal parliamentary delegation from, uh, from Parliament of Belarus. Still, still we're waiting when Belarus will have possibility to uh, elect uh, in a in a free democratic elections uh, not only a new president but also new new parliament and uh, but we are really cooperating very intensively with uh, democratic Belarus. so pleasure to 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 give the floor to thomas frankowski who who is member for open parliament from EPP group and who is uh, at least as we know very well known uh, in Poland as uh, former best player of uh, football or soccer. So, Tomasz, please, floor is yours. In the past, uh, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, uh, I'm really honored to take part in today's event with MEPs and national parliamentarians from Poland, Lithuania, Ukraine, and representatives of Democratic Belarus who were invited by the EU neighborhood East Forum. I would like to warmly thank Mr. Andrius Kubilius for this invitation and to congratulate him for this initiative. The constitution of May tier belongs equally to Poles, Lithuanians and the other peoples of our region. The legacy of the constitution, the idea of a political system it contains and its liberating and democratic message all make an important contribution to European heritage. Indeed, the 230th anniversary, the enactment of the Constitution sh should be an inspiring celebration for the whole of today's Europe. We should also assume responsibility for the future of this long-standing tradition. As we look to the future, it is no less important that these past events would inspire us to new joy and endeavors. Together, we are the main guardians of the historical legacy of the Commonwealth of two nations, and we must act accordingly as this difficult time. Recollecting the common heritage of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, of our two countries support their neighbors. Ukraine, that attempts to protect its sovereignty and ter territorial integrity in the face of Russian aggression and occupation, and the people of Belarus who deserve freedom and democracy in an independent state. We have the duty to ensure that the historically close people of Ukraine and Belarus can enjoy the fruits of freedom, independence and democracy. In the past, they belonged to the common family of European nations. I believe this will continue to be the case. As the chair of the working group on Belarus in the Euronest, I should admit that we, we are living in difficult times. Just like 230 years ago, once again, we see a growing military power in the East. Our neighboring nations aspiring to create democratic relations continue to face brutal disregard for, for human rights and freedom. It is no secret that Russia wants to take control of Belarus and crush the aspiration for freedom of the brave Belarusian people. Our own security and well-being depend on our ability to create a space of peace, democracy, and prosperity in the neighborhood. Therefore, we cannot just stand 
and towards the times of the right of the strong returning. We must clearly state that there is no place for new division and spheres of influence which negate to sovereignty and independent states in Europe. As you may know, I'm come myself from Podlasie, a land of tolerance and voivodeship and confluence of the Polish, Belarusian and Lithuanian cultures. Our people have lived peacefully together for hundreds of years. And for me, it is hardly imaginable that such horrors happen just on the other side of the border. For this reason, the working group on Belarus remains active and clo closely follows the situation in association with, with other EP bodies. It is indeed important that we develop synergies and speak with one voice when it comes to what is happening now in Belarus for the people of the region to be able to freely pursue their democratic aspirations. We will also need a clear vision for the EU Eastern Past Partnership. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks a lot, Thomas. Uh, thanks a lot. And now I would like to ask uh, Olga Kovalkova. Again, no need to introduce. We know her very well, member of the Presidium of the Coordination Council. Now, uh, perhaps from Warsaw speaks, uh, she will speak. So, Olga, please follow us. Uh, good day, uh, good day, господин Kubilius. I thank you for the organization of this event. Thank you to our friends, Poland, Lithuania, and Ukraine for the support. И за помощь демократическому сообществу людям, которые вынуждены оказываются не в Беларуси. Я действительно сейчас нахожусь в Варшаве. На самом деле сегодня мы вспоминаем день, когда был принят известный для юристов во всем мире документ. Это Конституция Речи Посполитой. Конституция имела прогрессивный характер. Она декларировала демократическое устройство общества и власти. И, конечно же, имела целью не только реформы внутри страны, которая находилась в то время в глубоком кризисе, но и защиту суверенитета. И сегодня мы видим, как через столетия страны, которые раньше являлись участниками политического процесса в Речи Посполитой, которые в каком-то смысле также являлись создателями Конституции, мы видим, как эти страны вновь ищут пути к более тесному сотрудничеству. И это наводит меня на мысль, что союз наших стран он был не случайен. Но как тогда у восточной и западной части были разные интересы и намерения, так и сегодня мы остаемся все при своих особенностях. И Конституция 3 мая как раз разрешала эти противоречия и учитывала разность регионов такой огромной многонациональной страны. И тем более мне сегодня радостно видеть, как формируется эта новая площадка где на равных, с учетом особенностей наших стран и разностью интересов, будут общаться не только, не просто соседи, а некогда большая семья нескольких народов. Но когда я думаю о Беларуси в этом контексте, меня настигает печаль. Не только потому, что Беларусь не представлена на площадке Любинского треугольника в надлежащей мере официально, а мне грустно прежде всего от того, что я понимаю, что история повторяется. Потому что вспомним, как Конституция была отменена. Кстати, символично, что это произошло в Гродно, на территории сегодняшней Беларуси и, к сожалению, при самом вмешательстве России. Вспомним так называемый молчаливый сейм, когда вроде бы демократически настроенные депутаты оказались бессильны решить судьбу своей родины и намного шире целого региона Европы. Как и тогда, сегодня многие политики в своем стремлении отстоять справедливость не идут дальше редких словесных заявлений и не отваживаются на решительные действия. К сожалению, цена этого молчания в далеком 18 веке – это тюрьма народов на полтора столетия, это бесконечное восстание. Цена сегодняшнего толерантного отношения к режиму Александра Лукашенко – целая страна политических заключенных. Знали ли депутаты Гродненского сейма, к чему приведет их молчание? Возможно, нет. Но мы с высоты исторического опыта уже не имеем права не знать. Мы не имеем права молчать. Да, Россия, как и раньше, является, мягко скажем, непростым соседом. Беларусь ощущает на себе ее влияние, направленное в том числе и на поддержку Лукашенко. Но Беларусь исторически всегда была членом европейской семьи. 
И мы хотели бы получить возможность выбирать внешнеполитический курс на демократическом референдуме в будущем, чтобы вы могли стать полноправными участниками различных региональных коалиций. Но вместе с этим нужно понимать, что у белорусов сейчас нет возможности выбирать что-либо. Что, что, что и ни внешнеполитический курс, ни президента, ни депутата. И поэтому выбор внешнеполитического курса не является сейчас первоочередной задачей для Беларуси. И важно, чтобы участники этой площадки приняли Беларусь именно в этот исторический период. И именно с этим мы нуждаемся сейчас в первую очередь в демократических изменениях, в свободных и честных выборах, как возможности белорусам самим решать свою судьбу, в восстановлении законности, которая сейчас отсутствует в Беларуси. И важно сказать, что именно об этом разделении ветвей власти на три говорила Конституция 3 мая. Именно этого сейчас не хватает политическому устройству нашей страны. Конечно, сейчас также важным моментом является сохранение суверенитета и независимости Беларуси. И для этого нам важна поддержка всех наших партнеров, солидарность, голос и решительные действия, потому что построение демократии – это длинный путь, и Беларусь должна его пройти. Вы, как никто, знаете о длинном пути ваших стран. Координационный совет принял меморандум белорусского общества, демократических сил о защите суверенитета и независимости. Я также, конечно, прошу вашей поддержки этого меморандума. Спасибо за внимание и благодарю за организацию этого мероприятия. Спасибо, Алиса. И... Спасибо. Спасибо большое. Спасибо большое. Now I like to ask Ghana Hupko uh, to take the floor again. Uh, at least for, for us, she does not need any, any introduction. You know, uh, now she's leading uh, Democracy in Action Zero Corruption Conference, uh, one of those new think tanks in Ukraine. But she's also very well known as uh, chairwoman of uh, Foreign Affairs Committee in the first post-Maidan Rada. So uh, you can share your experience, you know, with, uh, you know, forthcoming uh, post-revolutionary, uh, you know, members of post-revolutionary parliament in Belarus, which will happen at some time. So, Rana, pleasure as always to see you, and please, floor is yours. Thank you, Andrius, and it's my honor today to join to the celebration of the 230th anniversary of the adoption of the May 3rd uh, Constitution. And I think it's really important that at that time, Polish, uh, Lithuanian Commonwealth and the leadership uh, they had political will also uh, to adopt this very important uh, constitutional act. And today we are remembering uh, who wrote uh, this constitution and also the lessons uh, learned from the past and how we could use these lessons for the future. And uh, Andrews mentioned post-Maidan uh, time. And um, from uh, that, uh, the beginning of revolution of dignity. And now we've seen a lot of examples when um, within the Russian hybrid warfare against Ukraine, there were also attempts to use Ukrainian constitution to destabilize Ukraine inside our country. And uh, also we have to keep in mind the constitution of Philip Orlik from uh, the beginning of 18th century. So uh, it seems like the country with the tradition of constitution within our 30 years of renewed independence, we will mark uh, this year in August, we've seen many attempts to use Ukrainian constitution uh, in the favor of some political groups, oligarchs or Russian forces. So I think it's one of the issue we will discuss during our democracy in action uh, zero Corruption Conference this June 7, 8 in Kiev, and uh, with President Zelensky, with the Moldovan President Maya Sandu, also with representatives of US State Department, NATO uh, officials. I think it's really important to talk about hybrid threats to democracy, like disinformation, lawfare, and strategic corruption, and how Ukraine as a trendsetter could contribute to the post-Soviet space, because uh, this is what Andrius we did with you and with Lithuania and Polish delegation by promoting Ukraine investment plan during 2017-2019, convincing Western partners that successful Ukraine could become a nightmare for Putin and his regime. 
And also the struggle for democracy, freedom and dignity now in Belarus, is also geopolitical battle, how to extend European values and how to uh, help to, uh, uh, with defeat of R Russian Mir or Ruski Mir uh, at uh, the territory of Belarus. So we are with uh, uh, Belarusian people, with Belarusian nation, together with Lithuania and Poland now. And I agree with all demands that one day Belarus uh, will be free from a total totalitarian regime and uh, will be equal partner within the uh, Lublin tri Triangle. And also, since we are discussing about the future, so I think we also have to discuss in the eve of NATO summit, the vision of NATO 2030 and our dream uh, in uh, 2029 to meet in Lutsk with a uh, new president of Belarus or a new parliament. And I hope for that time we will see some uh, two or three convocations changed. And this transformation of Ukraine, transformation of Moldova, Georgia, Belarus also uh, will uh, be the beginning of the end of uh, Putinism, not just the end of Putin, it's uh, like, uh, and his personality of Putinism in Russian Federation, because I think it's uh, our common responsibility by fighting to a democrat for democracy, also to help each other, because the constitution of May 3rd, it's also a powerful example of unity, of consolida uh, consolidation, uh, consolidation, and also respect to the rule of law, which is really uh, crucially important for all of us. So I stop here and thanks a lot for inviting me and also for by having this event today and commemorating this uh, historical event, we are thinking about the future, we are uniting efforts uh, Lithuania, Poland, uh, Belarus, Ukraine, and also we will, I hope we'll see also uh, Moldova, Georgia, and not allowing uh, Russian expansionist policy to interfere in our civilizational choice to become one day the full-fledged member of uh, uh, European family and uh, NATO alliance. Well, thanks a lot, Hanna. Thanks a lot. Uh... Really, pleasure to remember all our dreams about, you know, <laughs> about what can happen during, uh, you know, this decade. Uh, so next week, uh, yeah, we lost, it looks like our good friend, Alexander Brovolsky, who, who is, uh, who is political advisor to Svetlana Tsikhanovska. He's, he was with us, uh, but uh, he, he needed to leave. So now I, I turn to Valery Kowalewski, uh, uh, again, representative for foreign affairs of Svetlana Tsikhanovska. And again, we know Valery uh, you know, since the uh, beginning of democratic revolution in, in, in Belarus. Valery, uh, you know, pleasure to see you and honor uh, and, and uh, you know, please take the floor. Thank you, Mr. Kubilius, and uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, very important event. It's a privilege uh, to be speaking on uh, on this historic event, and uh, it's a privilege to be speaking among the people who uh, do so much for, for Belarus, both uh, in Belarus, both among Belarusians, but also our friends um, to all the sides, uh, to, to the east, to the west, uh, to the south, uh, in European Union, in Ukraine. Uh, in the Baltics, um, it's a privilege. Thank you, and thank you for um, for paying so much attention to the events uh, in Belarus. Uh, my first education, uh, bachelor's degree, uh, was in history. Essentially, kind of, I started uh, studying uh, international relations as a part of the uh, historic uh, history department in the Belarusian State University, and. Uh, I had to study the events of uh, of the end of Zhezh Pospolita back and forth, like many times, from different perspectives, from economic, uh, from political, from international perspectives, and uh, uh, never before did I thought did I think that uh, we would get close uh, to the uh, to the historic magnitude of those events today. Uh, what we are witnessing today is essentially the crossroads uh, for Belarus, uh, for uh, for our independence, for our sovereignty, for our dignity, uh, for our identity as a nation. And um, uh, these 230 years of history 
they they sort of disappear uh, in, in a way uh, because um, those events and uh, the the events of today uh, they're equal uh, in the in the gravity in the seriousness and um, uh, while uh, the events of 230 years ago um, ended with the uh, dissolution uh, with the uh, separation of um, uh, with the partition, I'm sorry, of Zhezh Pospolita, now we need to do our best uh, not to let uh, bad things happen uh, to, uh, to Belarus, because what happens to Belarus uh, will have repercussions for the entire region, uh, uh, for, for our friends, uh, for our neighbors. Uh, therefore, it's important to, uh, to do our best uh, to overcome this major obstacle uh, to the development uh, of Belarus uh, to its uh, to its sovereignty and independence. And unfortunately, Belarus has been in this quagmire of um, uh, Lukashenko's policies, which um, uh, has never been about Belarus itself. It has never been about uh, the, the national interest. It's been always about the interest of one person, uh, political interests uh, that have not, nothing to do <clears throat> with the goodwill of, of the people. So we need to overcome this, uh, this major obstacle for Belarusians to exercise their will and choose uh, the direction uh, in which Belarus, uh, Belarus will, will develop further. Um, and uh, within the family of uh, European nations, uh, um, the, uh, the effort, the focus, the energy of our neighbors, uh, Lithuania, uh, Latvia, Poland, Ukraine, um, is of the most importance to us. Uh, we need champions, and you are you have been these champions, and we really appreciate your dedication, uh, your effort, uh, your focus. Um, we need to do more, uh, as we see uh, the uh, the reaction from uh, uh, from the European Union has been uh, has been consistent, uh, but not uh, uh, but not sort of up to the potential of European Union. Uh, we uh, we hear a lot about how European Union uh, has too too little leverage over the events in Belarus, but at the same time, I think that uh, there's a bit too much modesty uh, in these statements uh, because uh, um, consistency. Focus and the focus on uh, uh, practical steps uh, always helps. Uh, we've seen that in nine months uh, since the beginning of, uh, of the protests uh, and of the crackdown uh, in Belarus, uh, European Union response uh, has been um, empathetic, uh, has been energetic, uh, but has not been very practical. And uh, we need to do more. Uh, uh, I would, I would name probably several items uh, that are essential. And the first one is uh, the non-recognition of, uh, of the regime uh, as it stands today. Uh, it does not have the right to represent the people. So this signal has to be absolutely consistent so that Lukashenko, not only Lukashenko, but all his allies realize that his point of no return has passed and he doesn't have the future, uh, political future in Belarus. And this signal should go, uh, again, uh, not only to himself, uh, but also to all his allies uh, in the East. Uh, we need to, um, uh, to exercise pressure uh, on the regime, uh, both in terms of sanctions, but also political isolation, uh, financial, cutting financial flows to the regime, suspending the investments uh, in the critical infrastructure uh, for Lukashenko, because all this constitutes the oxygen that flows to Lukashenko and helps him stand on his feet. We need to, we need to uh, limit this, this sort of oxygen for dictator as much as possible. And finally, uh, uh, the support for Belarusians, uh, support for the civil society, for ordinary Belarusians, for the independent, independent media is very important. Uh, in addition to sort of programs that support uh, civil society, I would also suggest uh, to uh, to think about the programs to help people who have been repressed, uh, people who um, uh, who became political prisoners, but also to their families. Uh, people now live in Belarus in this atmosphere of darkness, uh, of oppression. Uh, people people would really appreciate a chance to get out of this atmosphere and uh, and have some air of freedom some air of some uh, sense of safety uh, some sen sense of uh, belonging to the normalcy uh, something that we have been missing for for quite a while 
Finally, uh, I, would, I would speak about the consistency of efforts of the policies of European Union and the United States alike. It's very important that uh, we stay the course. Uh, we do not flinch. We do not uh, change the subject. Uh, uh, Lukashenko's diplomacy has been quite effective uh, in these two decades of, uh, in creating the cracks uh, in the consolidated position of uh, uh, European Union and the United States, and we should not let it happen uh, ever again. Once again, thank you so much for inviting me to this uh, event, to this conversation. Uh, I appreciate again your focus and your dedication, and I hope that uh, all these efforts will uh, finally bring us to uh, to the resolution of the crisis in Belarus. Thank you. Well, uh, thanks a lot, Valery. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, really. And uh, well, we are almost on time uh, according to to agenda. My concluding remarks. You know, nothing uh, very special to say. Really, we are celebrating and also we are talking about, you know, the future. And uh, while we are celebrating and talking about the future, really, dreams are very important. And, and Hannah here reminded one of our dreams, you know, when we were traveling uh, all, all around the world, you know, with, with promoting Ukraine and its integration and Marshall Plan. Our dream was very simple. I don't know, you know, to speak after, you know, Valeria, who is uh, almost professional historian, it's about the history, it's not so easy, but uh, I would remind that in 1429, exactly almost 600 years ago, uh, in Lusk, in Grand, Grand Duchy of Lithuania, in territory of Ukraine, very close to the border of uh, Belarus, uh, not a big city, but with a very big uh, old castle, uh, here was organized the first, uh, we can call Council of Europe, because all, all the leaders of that time, you know, kings and, and monarchs, you know, were invited uh, to that meeting in order to decide about the future of the kingdom of Lithuania. And 600 years are coming. And our dream was very simple that, you know, let's have a very practical dream, you know, uh, to have another, you know, council in Lutsk, uh, in Lutsk, you know, castle in uh, now in, in 2029, you know, Council of Europe with Ukraine, you know, becoming member of EU exactly at that time, you know, Belarus maybe, you know, getting, I don't know, invitation or or whatever. And, you know, and sometimes after second glass of wine, I am saying that, you know, if Europe will be very lazy and very, and very slow, I know how to resolve that problem. We need to reestablish, you know, commonwealth of, of, you know, of Poland and Lithuania, of Grand Duchy of Lithuania, you know, with Belarus and Ukraine inside of that, you know, commonwealth. And then like Eastern part of Germany, you know, immediately uh, both Ukraine and, and Belarus would become, you know, uh, members of EU and NATO. That's a solution, you know, but uh, reality perhaps uh, will not be so easy. So what we need to do, definitely, we need to push for, you know, uh, to broaden our coalition of set of May in support of Ukraine and in support of Belarus, you know, uh, starting from uh, Lublin, you know, uh, triangle becoming really quadruple and, and things like that. That is what we shall do. But before the end, I would like to thank all, all who were participating and who, you know, assisted from, from our team, you know, to organize all that event. But the last word or, or, or how to say, or, or you know, or the voice is going back to Margarita. Margarita, thanks a lot. And well, we are finishing with your next song. Спасибо, Андрес. Вы бы хотели исполнить для вас песню на белорусском языке "Куполинка". Куполинка считалась народной песней, но ее написал Владимир Тырауский. И сегодня это настоящая белорусская народная песня, потому что ее знают все белорусы. И белорусы разного поколения ее пели и поют на улицах и во дворах. И сейчас мы хотим ее спеть для вас. Куполинка. Куполинка, куполинка, темная ночка, тем... Thank you.
гостям. Живи Беларусь! Живи Беларусь! Живи! Спасибо! Thanks a lot to everybody. Thanks a lot.